improve the economy and grow jobs is when the businesses have the faith that we're going to do what we need to do. Otherwise, what, what incentive do they have for investing in, in Connecticut? We need to start in our own fiscal house. So that's like the first priority, I guess, is to what is needed uh, spending. Did you say spending is a major, major issue? Yes, so spending in the economy. Spending in the economy kind of and attracting businesses to the state. Yes. And the governor's made a lot of trips overseas to bring in foreign manufacturers. Well, to the state. He, while, he was in, while he was in his latest trip, which was uh, to China for the second World Economic Forum mm -hmm. conference that he's attended in the last year and a half, meanwhile, Frito-Lay announces that they're going to expand. I don't know if he got Frito-Lay to do that while he was in China, but I can assure you that I haven't seen a lot of ROI on these trips. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly which corporations he's getting to expand at Davos or in China. Um, you know, our companies need help here, and uh, we need to keep the, keep the companies here as well as uh, try and get new ones to, to expand here. Okay. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we continue our debate conversation with Melissa Zabron and Chris Goff, uh, running for a state rep from the 34th District. Stay with us. We'll be back in 60 seconds. really have a chance within our lifetime? At Rotary, we believe it does. We've created programs at universities around the world, dedicated solely to teaching peace to a new generation. There's a new symbol for peace. Rotary. Mom, Dad, I know you don't want to talk to me about sex. You think I'm too young. You're afraid if we talk about sex, I'll no longer be your little muffin head. Your cuddle bug. Your butter bean. Talk to me about sex. Tell me you want me to wait. Sure, it'll change our relationship. It'll make us closer. Tell me to wait to have sex. And don't worry. I'll always be your muffin head. Your pumpkin face. Your pookie bear. Go ahead. Tell your schnookums how you feel. Hi, I'm Josh Pitty. You're watching the Get Real Story. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we're having a conversation debate with the two candidates for the 34th district, uh, which is East Hampton, East Haddam, and a part of Colchester. Uh, I want to thank uh, both my guests for being here, Chris Goff and Melissa Zabron. Thank you. I pronounced that correctly? Close enough. All right. All right. <laughs> Did anybody call you Melissa Z? Um, I've heard Melissa Z. I've heard Z O'Bron. I'll turn my head just about to anything. <laughs> just don't call me late for lunch. That's Never? right. Okay. Um, is there a solution uh, for every problem, a government solution for every problem out there? And you go knocking on doors, and people will just talk your ear off about something. And natural human tendency is to, well, I want to help you. But can you really help them? Is there a solution for every problem? Government, no, no. I, I don't think that government should get involved in every issue, especially um, when you're talking state level and the, and the local level. Mm -hmm. there, there's definitely clear boundaries between what local administration and, and personnel should do as opposed to the state. Um, so to get government involved in every situation, no. no. Yeah, a lot of times you see that with the DOT and a state route, yeah. and people don't realize, well, that's a state route, and, or that road, that's a town road. And some things you can help and some things you can't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what, what I'm seeing right now in East Haddam specifically, you talk about roads, we have a lot of bridge uh, issues coming up. We're going to be seeing a lot of construction there. But when you talk about you know, uh, state issues, I think the answer is clearly no. I agree with Chris on that. Um, you, know, you have to, um, I think, have that line where you know, people have to, we have to get more to be ind more independent yes. um, you know, and get that mindset uh, you know, over to people. So you can't have, because uh, uh, a solution costs money, whatever it is. And if there's not, not a, a study costs money a study. as well. Yeah. <laughs> I Solutions mean, don't have to. When I was on the board of Ed, it was, you know, always, uh, you know, the mindset sometimes 
was always, well, if you spend more money on a program, we're going to get results. And that, I don't think that's the case. I mean, you look at some of the larger cities um, and other things, and we throw a lot of money at uh, problems. And uh, sometimes the government can't solve them all. But uh, we need to really understand what those problems are. And it's really prioritizing the wants and, and needs, too, uh, within our budget. Again, going back to that huge deficit, you can't okay. solve everything. So you just mentioned it. It's, you talked about cities. And we're from small towns. So do you, is it, and you go to the legislature, are you going to pit the needs of the city versus the needs of the small towns? Or are they equal? I think it's going to be individual based on what the issue is. I mean, we have things in common, road issues, education costs, you know, taxes, all that. But there clearly are differences between the city needs and our small town needs. I mean, what Bridgeport needs and what East Haddam and East Hampton needs, I right. think are vastly different. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I've never lived in a large city. I've lived in the 34th district my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it wasn't for our volunteers and uh, mainly in our small towns, you know, that's what makes our government well oiled and work well. I'm not sure uh, what, what happens at the city level besides education is something I have some familiarity with because of my service on the Board of Ed. Yeah. So, so, so a lot of times when legislators uh, there's a city uh, caucus, city legislators caucus, mm -hmm. and from Hartford and New Haven and Bridgeport and all the major cities get together for a piece of legislation that's mm -hmm. going to be good for cities. And usually the, 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 last, the, the guy out of the picture is the small towns well, who, who there's, actually, there's actually a coalition of small towns called yep. COST, yep. and um, they all join together and work on uh, issues much like CCM. Are um, they as close together as the cities? Uh, they are. They work yes. very well together. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I want to go to Hartford to represent the 34th district, and I'll put the small town before the cities. Uh, the cities have their own legislators. Yep. They have their own advocates. Uh, we need an advocate for our small towns in the 34th. That's what I was just going to say. It's our, our job to represent our town, you know. What are you guys passionate about? What's a, is there an issue that you're passionate about? or Education would be mm -hmm. high on my list. Um, not only just, you know, school, regular education and, and spending, all those issues, uh, but special education needs. Um, haven't worked or haven't been on the Board of Ed, I saw firsthand what special education can do to small town budgets. Um, as well as working with DCF and being involved in special ed programs there, the benefits uh, of having services available. A lot of times it's more cost effective and more beneficial to the student to have those services in-house um, as opposed to outsourcing. So whenever possible, try and encourage the needed programs be brought to them. Did you, is you're, you're on the Board of Education too? I was on the Board. Oh, I served uh, seven years. Yeah. Now you both dealt with state mandates. Oh, yeah. And state mandates. Unfunded, you mean, state mandates. Unfunded, yes. unfunded yeah. state mandates. That costs money. Yeah. And, and if to you stop. And to, to be in compliance with the state regulation, yeah. you may have to take money from something else. Mm -hmm. Now, would you bring that experience to the legislative process saying, look, in the real world out there, this is going to cost our small towns. This is where they get their money from, yeah. property taxes locally. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Special education is a huge, huge. unfunded mandate, uh, the special education parameters to our local districts. You know, and then there's other things like in-school suspension um, and other things that they put out there uh, that cost uh, us a lot of money. But you asked before things that we are passionate about. Um, you know, for me, I'm extremely passionate about uh, getting our fiscal house in order. Obviously, I talk about it quite a lot. But I'm also very passionate about the environment. I have a long service of uh, volunteerism through different groups like Devil's Hop Yard State Park or East Adam Land Trust and even a group called the Harlow Hagenson Preserve which uh, tried to save an Audubon uh, piece of property. For me, the, one of the biggest things I'm passionate about right now is uh, the condition of Sunrise Resort uh, State Park, um, some place that a lot of us worked at when we were in our teens back in the 80s, East Haddam and East Hampton alike. My brother made a lot of eclairs back in the day, let me tell you. And when you walk around that facility now, it's broken windows, 
smashed in doors. It's been closed for how many years now? It's been closed for about three and a half three years. And a half. Um, mm -hmm. The state bought it for three million dollars and then immediately did nothing. Um, they haven't uh, uh, moved hardly any furniture. I think we had a row of bleachers moved to Gillette Castle when I was the president of the Friends Group there for a, a show, an artist show outside. But you know we have a serious problem there. I actually had uh, DEP, uh, DE, well it was DEP at the time, now it's DEP come down and, and somebody's from the governor's office came down as well and um, there didn't seem to be a sense of urgency to fix the safety do, there. Do you think so. that uh, the state has too many prop properties they have to maintain? Uh, well, they and should, should we start to no. be renters instead of owners? Or I, I think that there needs to be options. Mm -hmm. The state needs to be open to looking at different options. If there is a piece of property such as Sunrise Resort um, that they don't have the resources to file through on the original plan of making it a campground then are they need to do something. Are you saying that you'd like to see a property like that become a become sold to a private developer? Doesn't have to be sold. It could be leased out. Um, we just, where these different you know businesses or nonprofits do the renovations, do the upkeep, make it usable. Well, they just had an RFP out for Sunrise, and you know talking about what Chris said. But why would somebody invest all that money if they're not going to own the property at the end of the day? They do um, lease out the like concession operations. You'll see that in a lot of our state parks, um, and their plan was to make that a campground. But I point it out because it is an example of a lot of properties, and I think the state needs to do a better job of when they go to purchase a property to have a plan and to follow through with that plan. Uh, it has left that area of Moodis, uh, along with what's happening on Johnsonville, which is a separate private, privately owned uh, uh, land, and, and uh, it's, it leaves it, you know, subject to things that have happened in the past. We've had two arson cases out there, and you know, it's a serious issue. And I, I want to go to the state to make sure that we're dealing with it and dealing with the safety issues there as well. There were two proposals that were put in on that pro property. Um, one I know by a private. Um, Nonprofit organization working with autistic individuals mm -hmm. as well as veterans mm -hmm. to provide services, job training, skills. Yep. Um, and both proposals were turned on by the state. Yeah, no, he's right. Um, but the, the well, why, do think, re why do you think they were turned down? Uh, I already yeah. know. I already sp yeah. I spoke to the Too proposal. much bonding out there? For, no, we they, they expect yeah. these organizations to, to, to come up with the mm -hmm. investment. So the one that Chris uh, just mentioned, which was going to serve autistic children, mm -hmm. um, they had only raised um, X amount of dollars, and the state wanted to see somewhere around 500000 to invest. You're talking about 80 buildings at Sunrise that have probably asbestos and a lot That's of other really issues issue. yes. um, and so you know you're expecting a private uh, nonprofit business to come in and clean it up it's just not going to happen what's going to happen with firemen well I was going to go back to your original question okay. when you mentioned does the state have too much property mm -hmm. um, I, I think no to answer that directly I think it's the management and the use of the properties is the issue um, firemen's grounds yeah in East, in East, in East Hampton, Hampton um, down on Salmon River on Route 16 it's been an ongoing discussion amongst folks in East Hampton, and I have worked for many years, um, especially right after it was sold, um, to the state to come up in agreement with the town and our town park and rec director had come up with a maintenance schedule. The building there also is in disrepair, um, has a kitchen, has bathrooms, and is closed and not accessible. The property itself is not accessible. There's a gate that's locked. So to use that property, you need to go onto the online state I was just system say. like him and ask it mm -hmm. and use it. I just did that the other day because yes. I wanted to trust but verify what I've been hearing. Mm -hmm. You can easily yes, rent can. that facility right now. Yes. So I don't understand why it's inaccessible to the public. Yeah, the that's a, who, who, which department runs that? Deep. Okay. As well. Okay. So that's just an ongoing issue. So, what, so if somebody's having difficulty with the state, can they call up their state rep and say? Hey, look! Can you do something about this? And what can a state rep do? Oh. It would depend. On it the would issue. certainly depends on the issue. <laughs> yeah. I I want to be able to be, uh, um, you know, able to get those calls and direct them to the place they need yes. to go. So I don't you're think both going to be nudges. Is that basically? Well, I'll be more than a nudge, I think. <laughs> <You're past. laughs> but um, yeah, you need to be vocal. Okay. You, yes, yes. Coming need, from a small you town, to. you need to speak and up. And you need to be respect, receptive to uh, what the constituents mm -hmm. are looking for. And you know, sometimes you can't solve all their problems, but I think at the very least, you can direct them to a place where they can get some answers, and that's an important service. Well, how do you just define constituent service? 
that, anyone that lives in the district consider it a constituent. But not only in, in your own district, you could be talking to someone from you know, Farmington that would have an issue that impacts the state. Mm -hmm. So that also needs to be taken into consideration and you know, be directed oh. and forwarded to wherever it needs to go. If somebody called me from Farmington, I'd look up to see who their state rep exactly. was and, and say, you need to, to call your state rep. I mean, but I'm not going to not listen to that person. I'm no, definitely no, gonna... but you know, I mean, I, we have 24,000 people you have to re represent, and I think that, that that's my priority. Just to, uh, to local people, uh, would you have an office in either town or just, just one office? In you Hartford. have an office in Hartford, yeah. but yeah, what I, I would in, out of the home. I would intend uh -huh. on having uh, coffees, um, you know, in the district. Um, you know, maybe once a month is what I was originally thinking is something that would be uh, doable. So that if a, somebody couldn't drive to Hartford and they wanted to talk to me in person, um, that they would be able to do that.